Hello, everyone, and welcome to another one of our Transfer Talks, where we discuss what's been happening in the transfer market, the rumors, the confirmations as well, because now we're past the 1st of August. And here to discuss all those things is, of course, my co-host of Patrick Blake of Audrey Cycling and one third of the National Cycling Podcast. We have a lot to go through here, Patrick. But uh, yeah, in your screen days, you have something to get off your chest, apparently. Well, they're just continually dropping the ball, pretty much. There's all sorts of capitulation going on with any honestly, any of kind of days at the moment. And uh, Pidcock is apparently rumoured to be leaving, according to a few sources, there's a bit of unrest, like the Cycling News article, uh, one of the big agents, one of the big Italian agents, Alex Carrera, suggests that uh, Pidcock will be will be leaving, and I think that does kind of coincide also with the Ineos' decline in, in regards to Dan Bingham leaving as well. He was like a big aero coach, kind of really helped them dial in their TT setups, which has been Ineos is kind of saving grace, you could say, over the last couple of years. He's leaving after basically saying, I, don't quote me exactly on this, but something about there's like performance being left on the table or their vision of kind of performance isn't aligning with his kind of vision of performance. So there's a lot of unrest in the Ineos Grenadiers at the moment. Obviously, we'll get onto some of their confirmed transfers later on. But uh, Pidcock is kind of a big name. Obviously, a lot's been focused around him with the Ineos Grenadiers. He's obviously won some pretty big one-day races, but not really lived up to the full hype of like Monument winner or like GC contender that they perhaps kind of lumped him into the last couple of years. So obviously there is a little bit of unrest. He is a kind of Red Bull-sponsored athlete, so there's a lots of rumours about him joining Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe. Obviously they were a new like, sponsor announced just before the Tour de France to be kind of joining up with Bora Hansgrohe. So that's the kind of obvious move that people are leaning towards, but do you see any other any other possibilities on the table for Pidcock, Scott, or ones that other teams you'd like to maybe see him go towards from a, I don't know, a fan's perspective? I think Pinarello are going to be crying if he leaves any of your screen days because he was the reason why they created a cyclocross bike. And uh, yeah, they're not going to have that anymore. But uh, yeah, I think Pidcock is going to be a big loss for in your screen well not maybe a big they need to change something because it's not working they're signing uh, a young dane here uh, one of the guys who took the called the rats uh, kom something that jonas vingor did in 2019 18 and then jumbo visma signed him not only because of that but also it was part of the signing showing that he had the capability to call a quick team doing it once again, taking that KOM and uh, yeah, being a feeder team for one of the big super teams with a big talent. But 18-year-old is not going to be winning you the tour in 2025. It probably won't be. But we have seen some sensational talents coming through, you know, generational talents like, you know, your Pagatches and stuff who do kind of hit the results immediately out of the, the gates. But I think especially honing in on Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe as a potential target for Pitcock. I think it does make sense looking at their roster. They, outside of Primoz Roglic, you could say, lack a big kind of Ardennes presence. And I think the Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe are definitely a GC style team, but they've got enough GC prospects in there already where Pitcock could be a bit more free to do his own thing, which I think is more his style of role. I think it's the role that we see him being. Is He's not like a GC contender, really. Like, unless he has some big change. I think he is more of like a stage hunter. And I think that Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe could be a good target for him. But I don't know who else might go. Maybe Sudar Quickstep. Maybe Visma Lisa Bike. They seem to be getting their checkbook out quite a lot recently. I guess sort of they might be wanting a bit of an Ardennes style racer. Because, you know, ever since Roglic has left, I don't think they really have that much presence in the Ardennes classics. So maybe they might try and look out for him as well. I doubt UAE would because they've already got Pagatchas you know, cleaning up all stations. So I don't think they really need Pitcock. Although they have been making some pretty big signings, I guess. So maybe they might roll roll out via the checkbook again. But do you think Red Bull Bora is the realistic option? Yeah, I think you said it kind of the right way. Like, who needs him? Because uh, he's a very expensive rider as well. He's on uh, around 3 million, 4 million euros. So he doesn't come cheaply and I think the team that do have the funds is Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe uh, right now with that increased budget so they have to spend it on something so why not spend it on Pickhawk who could get you a few sixth monuments 
in terms of Star Bianchi and I'm still gold. But uh, yeah, I think uh, the focus of him being the next British Tour de France winner has kind of, yeah, somewhat, I don't know, diluted his progress a, a bit. But I mean, he has won Amster Gold, Star Bianchi and a lot of other big races already. So uh, yeah, I think he should just forget about the GC thing and just really just hone in on the odd ends and be a stage hunter, like you said. And I think Red Bull Bora Hansgrove would be a perfect place for him to do that. That's true. Although I've just throw one more name into the mix, just even though they're not rumored at all anywhere, but just pure speculation. Would the Gaflon Oh, oh. the Koenig. <laughs> Like, would Alps and the Kernet not make a lot of sense? They have yeah, no, I think you're right. Riders. They have mountain bike riders like Sam Gaze. They don't really have a Arden specialist. Like, I know we can talk about Vanderpool and his possibility at LBL and stuff, but they lack sort of an Arden specialist. They are just a stage one to team. In theory, Alps and the Kernet would make a lot of sense. I just don't know. They've not been rumored anywhere, and I'm not sure what their budget capabilities are, but in theory, Alps and the Kernet would make a lot of sense. But that is just pure speculation and no, i agree i think you're onto something and imagine if you had an ardennes team with both match of Annapol and tom pickock that would be ferocious yeah i think with the money as well in your pumping his salary so high it's quite hard to justify that for many teams because he, he doesn't bring the the big result like four million that's two million away from tad Bugaccio or a primus Roglic. so it's not like he's included in the top 10 of the World Tour rankings every year uh, because he has that other curricular activities such as mountain biking and cyclocross. So that's just the reality of it. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry if it sounds harsh, but it's truthful. We're all about, mainly about hard-hitting vax hit, Scott. Well, let's go to on, uh, well, let's try and get on the <laughs> close, as close to not truth here. Rope to Venable, um is rumoured to maybe maybe not be leaving it's quite a blurry line you kind of said i don't understand why he would leave sadal quick step we talked about the red bull bore hans link ineos grenadiers apparently is not where he's going surprise surprise but i mean he would kind of really fit into that piece we've talked about that before but uh yeah i mean with the increased budgets from other teams uh, i saw visma lisa bike being linked which i thought was a very strange phenomenon but Alex Carrera the Italian agent he was saying that uh, Remco Venable he could see be one of the riders moving potentially yeah Red Bull Borhans grow I mean we discussed that in the last one so we shouldn't really go over uh, the same ground but uh, they're double Olympic champion now so I mean that probably bumps his price up a bit yeah, and it probably does everyone's got to be recalculating how much they're going to be uh, sending in an offer for Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe, I guess, does make sense. You know, Red Bull coming in has provided a bit more kind of cash influx to try and sign Remco. I think they perhaps seem a little bit disappointed with the return on Roglic and the the promise that he was supposed to fulfil, but kind of hasn't so far. But it's only been, it's like literally been less than like a few months since Red Bull have actually come in. But I think they are scratching their heads a little bit as to how they're going to be competing for the Tour de France in the future. Remco was obviously the closest to Pagatra and Vingegaard, the kind of two big favourites at the moment. I think based upon that third place, Remco has to go somewhere with a decent GC team. Like, he can't be hanging around, like, Alperson or something, because they're not going to have the mountain support to support him in a Tour de France endeavour. I expect that's his big goal now. Which pretty much leaves... I mean, to be honest with you, Sudar Quickstep is, seems to be working fine, but where's the fun in saying when he's just going to stay? You know, this is about rumours. Ineos he's already said no to, which, yeah, okay... It, it, they've got a good grounding like in theory they are a very good GC team but obviously that's already been denied Visma Lisa bike does that even make sense no. to go there <laughs> like just, him, no to Jonas. I mean in theory he gets to be their Ardennes leader Remco that is it's a boy which yeah cool when he is anyway at Sadal yeah he gets the zero of Vuelta probably but yeah you're fighting the top dog position with Jonas it's just not going to really work out considering that Jonas is just a bit more secure. So I don't really know. I guess really... Decathlon. Decathlon is the place he's going. Remco to Decathlon 2025. He's not going to go to Decathlon. I don't think that the budget, which, you know, you you know, letting go of 
Well, I won't, I won't spoil it, but they've let go of somebody who maybe has eased up some budget. Rather boringly, it does kind of look like Red Bull Bora Hansgrohe is like the option, but that, that just seems really boring and anticlimactic for the people watching this. Like, oh, it's just where the, where the speculation is, is probably where he's going to go. But do you see anything else, Scott? And if anywhere else he might go, Lidl track? Yeah, Lidl track. That's the other one. You reckon? I don't see that. But it, you mentioned this in the last one, and we're going a bit over the same ground. If you went to Red Bull, that's specialized bikes as well. So specialized would be happy about this. We've seen before specialized getting involved with transfers where they prop up the contracts of riders. But uh, maybe they would do that just to keep him at Sedal if he's leaning more towards a little trek or etc. But that aside, we've we've covered that now. Remco will keep you updated and see where he actually goes. Israel Premitech was mentioned as well, which I think is very unlikely. I don't think they have the riders to Derek G riding for him as a support. And Lander is better than Derek G, let's be honest. But uh, yeah, okay. In terms of another story that came out of this article with Cycling News uh, with the agent is that Joao Almeida and Juan Ayuso were mentioned as potential movers. Almeida, that you pointed out to me, or Ayuso, one of them, is still under contract until 2026. But, I mean, it is a problem if you have so many riders with so many aspirations and then they're having to play second fiddle to Tadabagacha, even though Joao Almeida finished fourth in the tour. The big speculation is with Ayuso. The unrest that sort of came out of the tour post, especially the Galibier stage, where basically Almeida started throwing hands because the user was sort of sandbagging at the back of the group. I think the, the spotlight is on a user to to leave, or kind of there's just a little bit of unrest there. And I can see that. I think a user, you know, he, he it sounds bad to say, but he like he was the kind of hot property. And he got a super long contract, like five-year contract with UE. But since then, I know he finished on the podium of the Vuelta, but where's he going to sort of go from here? Does he have Tour de France aspirations? If that's the case, that can't really coexist with Poggy being there. Would a user consider going somewhere else? If, say, for example, let's just, you know, devil's advocate. If Remco were to leave Sudal Quickstep, would a user go to Sudar Quickstep? Or could it just be, you know, pure homecoming? Would a user go to Movistar? It's possible. They have actually re-signed Naira Quintana. Oh my God, really? <laughs> yeah, they actually did. So, you know, obviously they're kind of clutching at straws. They might want to try and get a user or something, somebody, you know, serious. Yeah, I think you're right. The re- Movistar and uh, Ineos Grandiers definitely have a bit of a vacuum in the GC space and someone like a user would definitely solve both their problems, I think. Uh, Ayuso is young, he has the capability, he's he's every single thing you want if you're an Ineos Grenadiers or a Movistar, Movistar even more because he's Spanish and he does speak English because what was it? he lived in California or grew up in California so no problem there in, with Ineos Grenadiers so Ineos Grenadiers, you're saving your messiah is Juan Ayuso uh, is there anywhere else you can think of? Hey, Visma Lisa Bikes, sign him just to grind out the insider information yeah, just to really kind of whittle, like just make everyone just a little bit more like, oh god, they're really dominating now. Maybe Bahrain? Would I dare, dare say that Bahrain could get involved? They kind of, they are, in my opinion, they are a serious GC team. Although this year's results, perhaps how it reflects it, they've got like, you know, they've made a signing, which obviously we'll talk about, and they've got like Boitrago, Bilbao, wow. Pools, the, the the cat murderer, you know, maybe they might want to be interested in a Yuzo. He's a bit of like a higher echelon GC favorite, so maybe they might be interested. But that's just, well, again, that's just pure speculation. That would be really the only other team that I'd throw into the mix. Or Israel Premier Tech, because they go, you know, rumored with everywhere, so you may as well throw them in there as well. You forgot Tudor and Little Trek. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. Uh, we'll we'll wait and see, but yeah, Bahrain, you're right. There is kind of a, a vacuum there as well. And okay, yeah, Butrago tenth in the tour, but fifth with Tiberi, but it's not really the podium spot that they probably would have wanted. Anyways, we might as well come to the confirmations. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, 1st of August, your prediction earlier this year came true with Simon Yates. We spoke about that last time. 
absolutely incredible patrick i yeah that was nobody was saying that i knew you said it and it suddenly came true so yeah uh, we have to take what you say very seriously but if we start from the top uh Kofidis, dylan turns he is in this is one that slipped well i didn't see this one coming yeah, if we just focus about in, because the outs will kind of come with other teams. Dylan Turns, former Flesh for Loan winner. Decathlon, they've been quite busy promoting a lot of their riders from the academy. And the rider you were talking about, obviously, who is leaving. And yeah, who is that? Who has been confirmed? Bit of a shock when it first get dropped. But if you've seen the Netflix, you kind of understand why. Yeah, better Connor to be leaving Decathlon A2R and to go to Jacob Alula, which seems almost like... Uh, again, it's kind of like a user with Bobby Star. It's like the homecoming. It's the Australian team. It's the the Australian GC rider. There's Hindley as well, you know. But O'Connor going to Jacob Alula feels like a glove to a hand, to be honest with you. I'm almost surprised it didn't happen sooner. So I think that will make a lot of sense. And, you know, O'Connor will be hoping to try and manifest a grand tour podium with them, at, you know, next season. They do have. Like some decent GC support so I don't think that's a bad move it's kind of like a, I don't think it's really like a net positive or, or negative I think it's just like a kind of that both of those teams are considered to be on a relatively similar level but uh, yeah speaking of I mean Decathlon one French team do we want to talk about the kind of other French team riders sure yeah I was just going to say and Yates was the big guy going out so that was oh, kind yeah. of like the whole yeah. field yeah yeah and then, yeah, Yates going out to go to this Melissa bike to do something. Be a domestique, maybe, or maybe to try and reinvigorate that 2018 Giro d'Italia that, you know, I think we'll all remember for the, for the rest of time, or that Vuelta victory from that year as well. So we'll wait and see what happens with Sam and Yates. But moving on to some other ones, obviously, Lenny Martinez is one which has been confirmed rumored quite strongly for a while now it's almost not a surprise we've sort of talked about this one before but he's going to Bari and victorious the big kind of french hope i guess the next one so we'll wait and see what happens with him he's had a lot of decent results so i think that lenny martinez should have yeah you know, i guess a little bit more gc backing in Bahrain. i consider Bahrain and victorious a stronger GC team than Group Palmer. So I'd say that's a net positive for. We also have Jonathan Navarez has been confirmed. He's going from Ineos Grenadiers to UAE Team Emirates. Again, that was very strongly rumoured. That was actually one of the first ones announced on the 1st of August. But other than them, like you said, Dylan Turns, Axel Zingler goes to Visimali Sabike. Interesting. Also, that whole announcement video was so odd. <laughs> Did you see it? They, it was like showed when he bunny hopped Pedersen. They like plucked him like photoshop style and started putting him in different scenarios it was um it was like something out of a fever dream it was really weird but anyway guillaume martin moves from cofidis to group palmer fdj uh, i'd say you know net positive for guillaume martin is that them trying to fill this lenny martinez hole and you know sort of. roman gregoire that we also think is leaving i think it sort of is but it's probably only going to fill about half of the hole sorry guillaume that might be a little bit rude but I mean, let's face it, we we both agree Cofidis isn't the greatest team. So I think that moving to Group Palmer is probably a decent move for him. UE's team Emirates have made another signing in Florian Vermeersch. Obviously the second place, I was going to say winner, second place finisher in Paris Bay in 2021, the one which uh, Sonny Cobrelli won. So Vermeersch really been brought in as, as another kind of big ruler for the break formation phase obviously their signing of Pollock was very successful so I think that's just another sort of trying to get another big Pelagy or something you know another big 80 plus kilo rider to ride on the front Ineos Grenadiers Scott um, <laughs> I mean they are just a feeder team now for UAE that's what we we have come to terms with yeah. Adam Yates went there Pacificov went there now Navajas went there anyone else um, it's a weird thing it is the Ineos Grenadiers so they bring in free riders Bob Jungles uh, being one of them Langelotti and another one kind of famous for being the my only really Monegasque rider my official Monegasque kind of rider and the other one being Peter Oxberg Hansen the guy who you said took the Calder 
KOM, 18 years old. So yet another one into the system. Not only do we have Andrew August, Leo Hayter, Michael Leonard, and Theodore Storm, we also now have Peter Hansen. So um, good luck to him. Um, you know, he's one of the, I don't know, of his 2029 in your super team that's manifesting itself. I just don't know what to make of these ones. I don't know why these youngsters think that Ineos is a good place to go, but that's a whole different video. That's just, you know, whatever transfers. Are there any other ones which I'm missing, Scott? I think that's basically it for our confirmations. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's almost like Ineos Grandia should have a development team like some of the other teams to put all these youngsters in. That would that would be a good idea. Obviously, they don't have a women's team either, but also they have Pauline Ferran Provo as a kind of like, you know, solo rider. But I swear I heard rumours that she's apparently going to Visma Lisa bike to ride on the road, which is just hilarious because it's just another great talent leaving any else credit is to go somewhere else. And it's, you know, it's in the women's, which they could easily make a team for. But whatever, that is a whole different discussion for a whole other time. Ending on a high note bashing any else grand is. It's with love, any else, because we want to see you better. We remember the heydays, but it's very far from that right now, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, with that, that's basically it for this Transfer Talks. Of course, we'll be back regularly now because the transfer season is well and truly open now, the market. So we'll have to see where the big movements are in transfer market and maybe yeah uh, the cycling agent will be correct and we will have one user and almeida somewhere else we didn't even mention almeida really but we're thinking more yeah similar to what i use it i think uh, wherever i use it doesn't go maybe almeida will go who knows but anyways with that thank you very much for watching make sure to check out patrick's channel as well i'll do cycling that will be linked down below and of course as always thank you for watching and see you in the next transfer talks